When I put a heel on one, my heel is like this, all the way to the top. Oh, no. That's the way I do it. What I've been doing on mine, after I went to sharpen them like Wilson does, and he says, put 35, 5, 20, so it cut out, I wound up with a full angle on that side, up to the point that that bevel is. So that's why I'm saying, when you, you don't work drag it when you start around a curve. Oh no, it never drags. I never, never, never drag. Except when I use a, a, a flat coming around the background deal right here. I drag nearly every damn time. Yep, see, now when I go to put my heel on, say I'm using a knife. I, I turn that to 45 on the, with my box, okay, over here. Then I turn this over here to 15 degrees. So what does your heel look like? Uh, on the bottom side, say I got my yeah. bottom side, my cutter there. I never go uh, all the way up there. All the way up. I go just maybe that much. Steve Dunn does that, and uh, you know, Rudolph does that, but to me, it just doesn't feel right. I mean, you know, that's why I do mine. This is the way Steve Lindsay does it here. That's the way Sam Alfano does it. That way you can tell that you have a consistent bevel on that heel from side to side. When you do it just like that, some some people can get that heel off. You know, I'm not saying everybody, but I'm not saying you do. Some people. Well, see, that's what I was telling you a while ago. If you yeah. get that heel laid it'll heel start heel. walking on it. It'll walk and it'll cut to that, like that. To that side right yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. So you got to make sure that these are even. Let us wind out that little get one longer than the other one or too much. And you, all you got to do is go back in there and hit your face. Yeah. And I'll get yeah. off. Right. But see, I put that heel on my hand. And when I lay it down there at 45 degrees and 15, then I hold it down and I, it'll make a line about that long. Well, if the tool works for you, it's then fine. Then That's not turn it the other way. I just don't the same setting and get right, right beside that line that you just see it on your diamond wheel. And you, you, you just take drag it set there on the other side. You take these you guys that are hammering hammer and chisel glass, there is no consistency in the world the way they sharp and Well, no, that's why if you look at them, the lines are all different yeah. sides. Yeah. They're everywhere. <coughs> and look under the under microscope, you can see where they get up the hammer every time. See, y'all cut y'all's uh, tool down from the bottom. I cut mine down from the top. Hmm. Where'd you learn to do it that You can see the point there. See, if you cut it down from the, from the bottom, Still got all that material sticking up here. Well, no, I cut some off and the top. And then some of them come in here and they cut them off flat. Mine look like a stealth bomber if you're looking at it from the nose. Uh, look at it from the top. It's it's uh, <coughs> Here, cut here, and then cut right across here. So this is flat. Yeah. See, all flattening that out. Yeah. Well, that's how I make my points. See, if you'll take that point down from the, take the tool down from the top side. Uh -huh. When you flatten this across there, when you look at that tool. There's no way to know if you got the tool straight up or down because you're looking at flat like that. Where 
if you're looking at a line running down that center, you'll see where that tool is up for that. It hurts my finger. Huh? It hurts my finger. Because I put my index finger on the top of the tool. And I'm cutting. I don't hold it like that. I can't do that. Well, I don't either. I hold it like this. Ah, that's the way I do. Tate Lindsay will hold it like a pencil. Seen Johnny? Yeah, yeah, I've seen him do, do that, that too. I can't do that either. I can't, either. I can't control it. But uh, too much. You cut that down from the top, when you get through, uh, you cut one side down. You know, get your face on the tool. Face your tool, and then turn it over and start on the bottom of it. I set mine on about 20 degrees. And Take it down. Take it one side it. down, it'll actually end up looking kind of like yeah. that. Yeah. Well, then when you come back and cut the other side down, it'll come right back to it right. square. And you can see when you cut that down, in other words, it'll bevel out like this off the top. You're doing the same thing to the top that you're doing like we're talking about flying mm -hmm. in the bottom. Mm -hmm. All right, that'll come back. All you got to do is grind them two lines. Even. Yep. yep. That keeps that edge right there. You can see that's the exactly that's where you're leaning. Pretty that close to the way I do it. But if you come back and cut this off, you end up with that flat. Yeah. And then you can't see where you're leaning. Well, I can't. All right. But, you know, I've about decided it's all in the way you learn. But if you go down there to the hardware store, Get your tubing, tubing, plastic tubing, yeah. they make eight of them. I thought I'd give you some of If 
I'm not real careful what I'm doing. Tool control. I've learned to be self-conscious about it and start leaning that tool to the inside when I get Yeah, tool here. control pretty well. Yeah. <coughs> I'm not real good on that well, yet. When you start getting to the end of that stroke, you get you got a tendency to let everything go over here. I have to go back over my line sometimes, keep it consistent, you know. Is it, it doesn't stay that way. If you look at, you can lay a hundred pieces of engraving up there, and you can look at the end of them scrolls, and out of a hundred, you might find ten of them. Right on the end is consistent with what this is part of it over here. Oh, that damn John Dwight makes me sick as good as he cuts. It's interesting. Does it's does it's a damn easy. Cuts, yeah. I hate him. <coughs> the company says he does a great job cutting. 